up underneath your wood, the better your fire will burn, but you have to have enough fuel in there that it keeps going. So I'm gonna put this one in on top of that one so that I still have some fuel, but I'm gonna keep this one up on the ledge so that there's air underneath. I do. Hey, handsome. Hey there. Do you have your list of honeydew? It is uh, growing. Mighty fine list. Yeah, it's growing quickly. Thank Hi. you. You're welcome. Okay, so wait, Paige, it's going to make a huge mess. Just hold on a second because yeah, it'll blow up. So we need one more connection, one more, what's it called? Pipe. One more pipe, one more section of pipe up on the chimney so that it is tall enough to draw properly. Once we have this one up and we've tried it a few times this year, Darwin would like to try an aircrete chimney and see if it draws better and if we have less creosote. So. I think it will actually. I think it'll be amazing. If he, if he puts it in, that'll be five feet, four or five, six feet of insulated double wall pipe. Yep. Which will definitely keep the temperature up. And the reason that creosote forms is because it gets cool enough that the smoke starts to condensate with the water, thereby causing creosote. Uh, nasty stuff. Yeah. And we have to clean that out about every six weeks at the latest when we're using it conventionally. Yep. But we've had a few cold mornings. Yep. And because of that, it seems like just we've got John for a few minutes before he heads to where he's going. Do you want to come hold the, the ladder for Dad, honey? And so when we get to the point where we need it one morning, it'll be nice just to be able to turn it on. Do you want me to just hand it to you once you get up there? No, I just know that I would probably drop myself and whatever I was holding. I mean, I've, I've only been up there once, but I didn't do a great job. Can you hold up, Paige? Because this is the point yeah, where both I hands. my safeties. Okay, you, honey. Yeah, I forgot how good shingles are on, on this side. Their skin. Yeah, they're not so great. This is the side to hold it, because when he steps off, he kicks it and it pushes it. So this is, are you listening? Yeah. Right, where I was you. is where you need to hold it. Okay. I'm gonna have my assistant to join me. No, nope, come on up. Oh. She probably won't have room to get up with you right there, babe. So have you got it? Hold yep, I got up. it. No, no, just hand it to me. So up to this point we have used the Elmira for the propane attachment while I have been canning, but now it is that time of year where we need to connect it for real and John is home. Hi everybody. They can't see you, honey. I know. So uh, it takes many people to move this stove because for one thing we're on tile. Doesn't it? Yes, it's heavy. Because we have four legs that need to make sure they have coasters under them, plus the two people that need to lift it. Mm -hmm. And you kind of have to watch and see, okay, at what point can we stop lifting and it's far enough out. This stove does have a heat shield on the back of the chimney so that you don't have to build a firewall on the wall itself. 
it was pricey. I think it was like $400 for that part. So that we could not use more space in the kitchen. We have a poorly designed kitchen. Uh, it doesn't have good cupboard space. It doesn't have a good anything space. And so when we pull the stove out into the room, it means we have a very small amount of space left for a kitchen table. And when you sit at the kitchen table, you have a tendency to overheat if the stove is going. So yeah. it's not necessarily a win-win. It's a little bit of a complicated win. But John has already taken the plates off the top so that mm -hmm. it takes some of the weight down. And if I can jump in. This stove is designed, it's a modern stove. It's not one of the old actual cast iron ones. So most of it is actually sheet metal to keep the weight down. So the heaviest parts are the plates and the fire brick in there. And um, so when we get to that level where everything is taken down, then there's only about 300, 400 pounds. It's still heavy. Yes, it's ridiculous heavy. But that's why heavy. we have to have somebody in here to help move the... Uh, Two spotters to keep the legs on uh, the padding so that it doesn't break the tile. So at this point, we're going to stop and reevaluate, make sure that our chimney's lined up. We don't need to go this way or this way. And we're just going to play with putting it together for a minute before we come back. He wants the iron triangle. Okay, so we have the box on. It actually went on with a lot less issue than we thought it would. Um, now the question is centered and clearances. Yeah, so, oh, nine inches. Ooh. Okay, so part of what we're going to do here is look here, and that is a seven inch clearance to the inside of the steel here. On the side of the stove, down here, right at the back of the fire box to protect the wall from getting too hot and burning. And then after those two parts are on, we are done. Okay, so John and Paige for the most part got this done. I came in every once in a while, but it sure looks pretty. I cannot use the propane attachment when we are using it as a wood stove. It's just super unsafe to do that. So. And I won't be reconnecting it unless I have some canning to do. I cannot do canning on this stove top because you have to move the pot from spot to spot to keep the pressure right and you ha it clinks the glass. If, if I was in an emergency situation, I guess I could, but I would, I would be concerned about doing that because if the stove got too hot, you would have to actually lift the pressure cooker off the stove and put it somewhere else in order to cool it back down again, which is scary when it's pressurized. So because if you drop it, it turns into a bomb. Oh, that'd be fun. I'm doing good back here. No, come I'm back. Honey, they can't see you very well. Okay. Can you see the whole stove? Hot side, medium, cool, because the fire sits right here. Okay. Uh, but the problem is it saturates with heat after hours and days of running a fire. And so even over here, it will still boil. Is that right? When we were cooking pig food, it was still too hot sometimes, even right there. If so. we were trying to bake in it too, in order to bake and have the heat and smoke circulate in here, you have to get a very, very hot stove. And when it's hot like that to bake, it's too hot to have anything on the top without it burning which is why I'm excited to try the Aircrete oven on the top this year because then we won't have to, we can do small fires in here, cook using the Aircrete oven on top of this, and we won't even have to use this oven. So that's kind of what I'm hoping because then we won't have as much creosote buildup. It's when you damp the fire down and try to circulate that smoke through that you have creosote. And it, it, it's just complicated and it's a little more to clean up. So we're excited to try it out. Talk to you later. Hey guys, we're gonna go ahead and do our first burn. Reason being, we have our first cold weather. It's a very stormy, rainy. We've got some wind blowing through, so I need to put up some more weather stripping on the door. 
but we are ready to get the wood stove going. So first things first, I just kind of need to clear it off, get everything away for, that could melt, that could be explosive. Um, so my mom, when I was a kid, left a box of matches in our warming oven and they did catch fire. <laughs> she also left our Halloween candy in the warming oven and it melted. So always check, always check that you don't have anything that is going to be a hazard. So as pretty as the flowers are, they have to go. They're a summer only decoration. And when I, when I am using my wood stove for other things besides wood burning, I always like to keep this plastic um, lid there to protect my stove from damage from mostly water. So I have checked everything. I like to store up cotton fabric over the summer and then that's what I use as my fire starter when I'm starting my fires. You can use old socks, old underwear, you can use cotton t-shirts and just cut them up. They work a lot better and there's a lot less ash than if you try to use paper. All right, I prefer to get my fire started with some candles. I find that it just works better instead of trying to be a purist and fight it. It's so much easier just to use a candle. Um, in lieu of a candle, I will use cotton, but I, I do prefer candles. So this is my alder that starts my fire up really, really nice. Thank you. You can just use the drips from candles. You don't actually have to use a full candle. It doesn't take very much. And I have not started this stove in forever which is funny to me because I'm so used to the rocket mass heater, I don't know if I'm gonna know what to do with the stove that actually creates smoke. With these stoves, you don't wanna build a really big fire. You really don't want a big fire. You want to have small pieces of wood that you put in more frequently so that you don't overheat your house. The nice thing about the wax is it'll drip down onto your fuel so that it, it'll get it going hotter, it'll give you coals faster, and then you can just kind of keep maintenance mode going. Polyester doesn't work, nylon doesn't work, wool doesn't work, it just stinks. So make sure it is actually cotton. Can I go get one dry piece of wood, please? The smallest or the Um, the one with the most little pieces sticking out. Here. Don't make a move into it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You always want to use dry, dry wood. The only thing we really have in this area in abundance is cottonwood and pine. Another reason why the rocket mass heater is so nice is because those are dirty woods. They create a lot of smoke. They don't create a lot of heat, and they can create a lot of creosote. And ash. All right. So, so far, it started up, and it has a really big, pretty flame. Okay, go get me another piece of wood. Okay. The trick is to have enough wood in there that you can build up a good bed of coals, but not build up too much heat. That is the big trick. So once I start to see that I'm losing some of my under, what I started with underneath, I need to put another piece of wood in so that I don't lose the, the fuel because the more air you can keep up underneath your wood, the better your fire will burn. But you have to have enough fuel in there that it keeps going. So I'm gonna put this one in on top of that one so that I still have some fuel, but I'm gonna keep this one up on the ledge so that there's air underneath. I do like to open the ash door because it allows more oxygen to go up directly into the fire. Just a normal fire, 
if I open this, it takes off and you can hear it really well. We also have quite the windstorm going outside, so that is also accelerating that whoosh. So, what I'm gonna do now, I have a pretty good fire going, is I'm gonna let it come down to coals and then probably once, when, well, there's still a few coals, I'll put another one in so that it doesn't burn us out. Now, if I had been running this for a few weeks, I would not be brave enough to have it sound like this with the wind going outside because it could really accelerate a chimney fire. So you have to kind of be careful about how long has it been since you cleaned your chimney and what's the weather like outside. If it was my rocket mass heater, I would have zero fears because it burns like this constantly. It burns hotter than this constantly just because of the aircrete chimney. Um, I love this stove. I think it's beautiful and it has its place. I would take a rocket mass heater over this any day because I feel like it's safer. It's safer for me to burn. It's safer for me to have my kids around it. And it's safer in inclement weather because I don't have to worry about creosote and chimney fires and things like that. And you can't burn yourself on an aircrete stove. This one, um, you can burn yourself on it pretty easily. But it's beautiful. You just have to be careful around it. It's a wonderful tool. And I've just been spoiled the last three years having the rocket mass heater. I'm also spoiled having this. It's not that I don't love it. So hopefully you enjoy seeing this and I'm excited to test this against the Aircrete rocket mass heater. And the trick will be, can I bake and cook with the rocket mass heater as well as I can bake and cook with this one? And um, nothing can be a wood fire. It's so cozy, whether it's the rocket mass heater or the Elmira, they're both amazing, wonderful tools. And hopefully you feel like you learned something today and we'll talk to you later. Make sure to go check out the Honeydew Carpenter. He is just finishing up the last touches on his DIY plan for the Aircrete Rocket Mass Heater, and it is the same plans that uh, will be used on the stove that goes in the basement for us to try. So you're welcome to go check that out at the Honeydew Carpenter. Come on. So I do not use a wood stove for pressure canning, but I will use it for pressure cooking. It's perfectly safe because there's no glass jars in there and I can move it around to a cool spot and we just set the timer like normal. We've got the fan going, we've got the stove going. We're ready to eat a delicious homegrown rabbit lunch.